Just look at this amazing backdrop. I'm here in Norway with Olivia Portray, my great friend, and uh, I got invited to come up here with, from, uh, from Henrik from Northern Bait to actually go out fishing and do something that I hadn't have ever done. Go fishing for great and giant cod up here. But uh, to be here with Olivier and, uh, and some great friends, it's going to be a, a tremendous experience. And actually having people that have been all over the world, caught some great fish, actually show me how to do it as well. So uh, anyway, Olivier, what do you reckon to this place? Well, it's marvellous. I love Norway. I've been here very often. I love these northern countries. It's rough and cold. You suffer, but that makes it a nice adventure. But uh, I think, uh, by, by all accounts, there's some big cod out there as well at the moment. Very big cod. You can, you, yeah, cod of in excess of 100 pounds. You can, but you know, we don't have to count with these fish. 40, 50 pounds are already very big cod. Yeah. In the North Sea, these are the record cods. Well, we're in a place called Andoy, which is a little island right at the top of top of Norway. I mean, Norway is a really big country. It's a really long country, isn't it? It's 2,700 kilometers long, I reckon. And uh, we are north of the Lofoten. And apparently, fish are moving further north from the Lofoten. Initially, the Lofoten were at the top spots, and now it's a little bit more north, and that's where we are. Right, well, I mean, last, uh, last night we arrived, we had uh, great food, great local food as well, and uh, we had uh, some, uh, some whale and... Uh, uh, whale carpaccio. Whale carpaccio. Raw whale meat. <laughs> Raw whale meat. And uh, was, it, was it minky whale? Minky whale. These are the best ones. I know them from Iceland, and I love to eat them. And you know, these guys here, they don't destroy their whale population. In my eyes, their whale hunting is okay. It's delicious food, and you can take out some of these animals. There are many of them. Well, I think the thing is, this is, this is a truly, well, it's a wilderness. It's a, it's, a, it's a wild environment. And the people that are up here, I mean, you know, when you see the conditions, you know, it snowed last night. I mean, crikey, they had to get, uh, just to even get down to the boats. It's been nearly two hours just getting the boat ready to go out. Well, there were one or two tons of snow in the boat. <laughs> And if we leave that in the boat, we can't get uh, uh, any speed anymore with the boat. Anyway, something I've been looking forward to saying for a long time. Let's you and I, let's go fishing. Okay. <laughs> Hey Olivier, this is um, the sort of setup uh, that, uh, that I've got at the moment. What do you reckon? Do you think uh, we should go with this today, or uh, because there's some? We're going to go after some big cod. We we'll go after big cod, but they might be very deep. And the spool, you know, has a small diameter. Right. And you will be breathing <laughs> like crazy all the time. So I advise right. you a spool, you know, with a bigger multiplier spool you can use with a bigger diameter inside right. or a fixed spool reel like the ones I use. Right, okay. These are the fastest. Yeah. And so you get less tired by retrieving all the time from big depth. This comes also from playing the fish. Right. And so I suggest you cut this off and I give you this one. Right. Yeah, this is much bigger yeah. diameter sure. and will be nicer for you to fish with that one. Right, okay, well let's, uh, let's get this set up and uh, I'm looking forward to getting out and seeing what we can catch today. Good thing for you Ross is this type of reel uses the right hand. It's like driving on the wrong side of the road in your country. Brilliant, that's fantastic. That's really useful, you know. <laughs> yeah. Does it come a bit like on one of the Tom Toms? It says, uh, by the way, you know, before you continue, please be aware you're driving on the opposite side of the road. I would say on the wrong side of the road. Wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Depends where you're coming from. We'll hold like this. jigging today. Right. What sort of depth? Well, uh, hopefully 50 to 80 meters, but I'm afraid it might be 120, 140 meters. Right. Yeah, it's a long way to pull a fish up from 140 meters, that's for sure. But you see, cod are not tuna, you know. You don't have to worry too much, we'll get them in. 
Right then, Olivier, so let's, uh, in terms of the rig we're going to use for today, um, I think we, we can use that, that eel later on, because I think that'll be quite effective yeah, well, and be, be fun. It is nice, but it's the type of bait that catches rather the fishermen than the fish. <laughs> we have very reasonable baits here that are well proven for this type of fishing. These are these heavy jigs. Right, that's a big jig. What, what sort of weight is that? The 700 grams. Right. So it's much heavier than your eel. Yeah. It goes down quicker, yeah. so you lose less time. And there's solid hooks on it more hooks than on your eel, the single hook. Right. We have a treble at the end, very solid, owner 5.0 treble. Right. And a so-called assist hook at the top end. Right. A small single hook on a solid braid, and this is tangling around. And the good thing is, when the cod come and they open their mouth, there's a suction effect. Yeah. And then they are not able to suck in all the time the lure, but the small leader Sucks of the it. single hook will move into the mouth and you will see how many fish will hook on that single hook. Right. It's very precious and it's a good thing to have. Right. And therefore I suggest, and then we put the second bait a little bit over your lure. So that means we could actually catch two fish at the same time. Yes, exactly. Uh, you reckon we... So we'll suffer twice a lot. <laughs> it a big pleasure for me. <laughs> Great, right, well let's get this okay. set up then. then. cut it off again. Yeah, we can turn it on. No, there are no special knots. In fact, it's a very simple technique. The main thing is to find the fish and to remain maximum of time over the fish yeah. while fishing. And shorten this a little bit because your rod is short so that you don't retrieve. If the leader is too long, you can't retrieve far enough because the swivel will be touching your, your top. Yeah. That'd be a pain to get these big fish on the boat, particularly if there's two. I hate making knots with this big nylon. It's very solid. And you might be able to fish all day long with it. Right. Without losing a single lure. So now you put it in. The swivel. And we put this one on the lower end swivel. Right. Now you're ready for action. That's it. So that's, that's the rig we're going to use today. And I hope you'll suffer a lot. Thank you very much, Olivier. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> we're going to have some fun now. You know, often you go fishing and you're disappointed when you don't catch anything. Yeah. Here, of course, we'll be disappointed if you don't catch anything. But uh, often people are disappointed because they just suffer too much. It's too hard work. <laughs> it's a nice problem to have. Indeed, indeed. Well, let's, uh, let's go and see what these fish in Norway are all about. So now I've let my jig drop down on the bottom. I lifted it about 10 meters and I moved it just gently, not to hook the fish outside. But as I have two hooks, I don't play my first fish that is already hanging on the hook. I wait for another one to come and take the other lure. Yes, now I have two. <laughs> one is gone away again. Here I have two again. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. So you, you leave it. And it 
It's always a lot of work to get these fish up from 80 meters depth, sometimes 120, 150 meters. And they are sea fish, they fight more than freshwater fish. They're coming. As I told you, two fish. This is a small fish. And we find bigger ones. On the end of the line. No, you're too old for that. <laughs> you will have two fish, you'll see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this year, you're not used to with carp fishing, that now happens. Yeah! <laughs> I'm waiting for the second one. Now there are two. <laughs> Wait for the second one. <laughs> okay, let me you. There you go, Olivier. Okay. This is big. Catching two of these fish at the same time, but uh, it's certainly tough work bringing them up nearly what 75 80 meters down. But just an incredible feat, so, it's a long way to bring the fish up. But it's incredible, really good. And that, that, I have something big coming on, yeah. yeah. It's amazing how many fish are down there. Yeah. And it's very rare in the world. Just here, in the very north of Norway, all around Iceland that you can find them. The conditions are rough, but the fishing is good. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay. I'm going to wait until you get that one up. Though. Yeah. Maybe you land it? Yeah, <laughs> why not? Yeah. That looks like a real good one. Maybe two good ones. Yeah. Later, I put your third hook on. Great, that'd be about four. <laughs> we'll, try, we'll try four or five at the same time. No, that might kill you. I don't think. I think I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to take one of those hooks off. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's a high nice penny on that fish. Ah. Here we have it. There you go. That's a lovely little fish. That's a fish about 15 kilos. And I'm going to unhook it. This fish is not bleeding. Stomach is well inside. I'll release it. Okay. 
Thank you. Right, well, we're just going to move off uh, and that, to, to, to see if we can find another spot. Uh, whilst there are still quite a few fish actually showing in that area, uh, the, the, the actual ledge, there's a ledge up here and the different water currents uh, apparently are affecting where the, the fish actually are. So there's more uh, more fish. It's interesting to see on the on the fish finder, uh, the just the sheer quantity of fish there are around here. And uh, it's interesting to see also when the, when the line actually gets down to the bottom and uh, you, you can feel one fish come on and then certainly in a short period of time, having kept that one down there, boom, you get a second one on as well at the same time. So it's uh, quite remarkable, it really is. It's 72 meters deep, and all these small spots, they are the cod. In this case, they are close to the bottom, in the five meters within the bottom line. Shouldn't take long to hook another fish. This is a good fish. I think it's two on Yeah, come. Oh, it down there. <laughs> it's amazing how much heavier they are when they hook in the middle of the body. And you see on the assist hook again. Yeah, absolutely incredible fish. I mean, you know, just just to see the size of these things actually up here, the size of the heads and the fights and. Uh, these ones are coming up from nearly 100 metres down, so they've, uh, it's certainly quite an effort, that's for sure. And thanks to my great friend Olivier putting two hooks on my line, when you catch two of these monsters at the same time, it's just, it's, it's tough, but uh, it's just a joy to be up here in such an amazing situation, amazing surroundings and in great company. Well, uh, that's the, the cod fishing finish for the day, uh, at least certainly for the moment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back in, we're going to have a quick change and uh, freshen up, and we're then going to come back out here again and uh, see if we can catch some halibut. That's what we'll do. Our arms are aching from all the cod, and with the Haley boot, chances to catch something are much less. And uh, so our arms are able to recover. But if we hook Haley boot, it can be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> We're just getting ready now to actually go out to halibut fishing. So we've changed the, the rig from the rig that we had previously to this new one. Now, the, the, the purpose of this is two triple hooks on the end of the rig here. And then onto that, we're going to use a mackerel flapper uh, to use as the bait. And then further up the line, what we've got here is we've got this, this is the weight. So that will actually form a mo movement within the water. And then from there, then the, the halibut will then come up and then bingo, on, uh, on we go with that. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see the difference in the type of bite that the halibut will actually give rather than the bite of a cod. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a big difference. The difference is now we're not fishing with lures anymore, but with natural baits. And uh, these, we lower them on the bottom of the sea, lift them at the contact of the bottom of the sea because it's very stony there, up five meters or 10 meters, and leave it more there at that level. And the shaking of the boat with the waves will make that our metal bait, our fish bait, will be moving a little bit in the water. And the Haley boat have good eyes, the water is very clear, and they like to come up for these baits. Right on the right place now for halibut. This is a, a particularly good mark apparently, the, the, the skipper's favourite mark in fact. So now it's just a question of different technique we're using here. Uh, unlike having the jig as we did previously for the cod, this is a question of the bait's down there now, it's moving, 
and uh, we now need to go near the halibut and uh, see if we can get them to, to take it. my bait down, lifted it 5 meters, from 37 to about 32 meters, and not long after I had a heavy wood nibbling, but apparently they take very slowly the bait, and he didn't insist, so maybe he's following our boat, and he take again. On the rod of Henrik, there were also one or two nibbles, so there's fish around, and we have good chances, it would be magic, and this great surrounding with this huge light. Well, let's hope. You just had a bite here on this one as well. The, the, the rod, the rod tip went right, went right down. But uh, apparently, what you've got to do is you, the, the technique is to leave it until the halibut has actually taken the, the whole bait down, and then uh, then strike. If you strike too early, you pull the, the bait out of its mouth. Ross, Ross, Ross. Right. Well, it would appear I've got a halibut on. It's probably bigger than the one on the other boat. Let's hope it's not too big for us. Coming up 150 meters. Definitely not no cod. Yeah, this is a this is definitely a very different bite. Can you give him his camera? Cod. This is definitely. This is why we came here for halibut. I mean, what a fantastic halibut that was. It put up an incredible fight for the size of the fish. I mean, I, to be honest, I thought it was much, much bigger when it was coming up, but uh, what a fantastic looking fish. Delighted I've caught it, and uh, delighted we've come out and achieved catching the second target species of the day. So uh, anyway, here it is, the halibut. I've been to Norway several times to many different places, but this was the best day of fishing that I've ever had in Norway. Well, that's, uh, it's great to be in such good company as Olivia and, and Henrik. If we hadn't have had the conversation about that little cod I'd caught in England, <laughs> yeah, there and, you go. <laughs> and what it was like, none of us would have been here today. So it's uh, yeah. really quite something. Here's to new PBs for both of us. Hey, how's that, Russ? Indeed, it's a great <laughs> way to spend it. Well oh, it's been fantastic. It's been great having you guys. It's been lovely. Thank you.